So if somebody's got a karma of three, the karma of three, again, is Neptune. It's associated with Pisces. Um, where it's tricky now, <laughs> there's like exceptions to all rules. Um, where it's tricky now is that somebody born in the 12th month, if you add a one and a two together, you see you get a three again. Okay, so now we've also got the exact same number pattern for this, okay? So um, one of the weird things about numerology and astrology and trying to blend them is in astrology there were 12 signs and 10 planets. So in the old days um, they couldn't see everything. So um, Mercury was for Gemini and Virgo and Venus was for Libra and Taurus. But in this numerological system We've taken one of those out, and so we've got Chiron as a, as a planet and a, a sequence. So that takes out May, uh, May, so May, instead of it being Venus, is now Chiron, okay? So all people born as Tauruses are Chiron, and those Geminis that are born at the end of May are ruled by Chiron, which takes one of the Venuses out, it leaves a Venus for Libra, um, but in this particular situation now what we've got is we've got two threes. So we've got that um, Sagittarius and the first people of Capricorn that are born in December, at the end of December, um, are actually ruled by a three which is Neptune again. Okay. Now this is interesting as we play with it because You've got Neptune, which is the planet of illusion. We've got a Pisces here, and we've got an Aries here, ruled by Neptune, which is going to make it tricky. And we've got Gemini, and we've got Capricorn. But each of these is being slanted based on their astrology. So classically, Neptune is planet of illusion, delusion, bewilderment, hysteria, madness, dreaminess, and falsehood. <laughs> okay, so. Pisces, classic Pisces, have to be karmically aware of where they got caught in illusion. Now, the illusion oftentimes is an illusion of positive mind, which is grandiosity. I'm amazing. I'm terrific. Everything's wonderful. I'm so smart. I'm so incredible. It's usually this positive mind. Like we want, if we're going to have an illusion, we might as well have a positive illusion. We might as well not have a negative illusion. So it's this really positive, upbeat energy. Um, an Aries born in the emotional slant to their fire. So think of Aries as a fire sign and Neptune as a water planet. When you get water and fire together, you get what? Steam. Right. So an Aries, um, which is a cardinal fire sign, which means it's the starter up of the universe. It's like strikes a match and it's like whoosh. So they love to start things. They have trouble finishing things, but they love to start things. Then you've got a Pisces um, Neptunian watery intensity with that, you can get a, a force to be reckoned with. I mean, so it's like a steam engine on a train. So now you've got a cardinal fire sign, but it's like chugga 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 chugga. So you get this watery um, driving force because water is going to move no matter what. Water is going to keep going no matter what. So that gives it a momentum to the Aries that the Pisces don't always feel because they get lost in the water. So a classic Pisces Neptune person can, in their negative side, get caught in their own illusion. And so like um, I'll, I'll deal with classic Pisces, born in the third month, and they're like, well, I'm trying to move, I'm trying to move, I'm not getting anywhere. And I try and explain to them that they're caught in an illusion that they're moving because it's kind of like um, fish in a stream, that fish are in a stream in an eddy sleeping. And their little tail's moving, but they're sound asleep, right? And they're not really moving. So Pisces have to be a salmon going up a stream. They have to kick that little tail, and it's work. It's like, I'm going to get battered and bruised and bonked before I get to the happy hunting ground, but I have to have that driving force to get there. 
So in the most positive sense, that's what we want Neptune to do, is that Neptune is I have to break out of my illusion as a Pisces. I have to recognize that nobody's going to do it for me and I have to do it for myself. Um, but when you've got the Aries energy in there, you've got this, um, the fieriness and the energy and the vitality of Aries mixed with this watery emotional connection to something trying to drive them forward. And it creates great success. It creates great success when you get that combination. So um, you, it kind of gives the watery emotionality, depth, wisdom, and clarity of a Pisces mixed with the energy, the enthusiasm, the fire, and the movement of an Aries, okay? So it's kind of the best of both without the worst of both. Then when we get to Sagittarius, Sagittarius is normally ruled by Jupiter. But Jupiter numerologically is going to be the 10, which is um, Alexander the Great number, okay? So this particular goes back to Neptune. But now we've got a Sagittarius, which is mutable fire. So Sages are normally the happy-go-lucky, good-natured people of the universe. They're really, you know, fun, they're enthusiastic. Um, but a Sagittarius, um, think of it as a centaur. And a centaur doesn't like, it, they're freedom-oriented. They, they want um, freedom and they want expansion and, and they don't want to be yoked to a, a wagon in any way. So the illusion that they have is that I'm free, I'm free, I'm free, I'm free, I'm free, and I don't want to be yoked down. So their illusion is usually related to grandiosity because they're ruled by Jupiter. So Jupiter says, I want bigger, better, faster, stronger, more amazing, right? So they're chasing after the illusion of bigger and better. So the illusion of bigger and better is where they're caught in the illusion. So. I always like to think of this as a, a person who's in a tent with diamonds and they're in a desert and it's hot and they look out and they see this illusion that there's diamonds out there and yet they've got diamonds right in front of them but those kind of look bigger so I'm going to wander out there and potentially get lost in, in a sandstorm and not be able to find my way back. So part of the challenge for a Sagittarius is to recognize what's illusion of grandeur and what is real for this moment. And, and it's tricky because they want that illusion of grandeur and they go for it no matter what. And sometimes they get it, but they don't always get it. So again, the karma of three is called devil and divine. So it, it's kind of like it goes up, it goes down, it goes up, it goes down. So it's like, well, I want this. Oh my God, I can't get it. Oh, I want this. Oh my God, I can't get it. So um, part of the challenge of the Sagittarius is to figure out how to break out of that uh, illusion of grandiosity and to get more real and practical and down to earth. And, um, and learn to reframe the negative to the positive and recognize that if you want to go for big, you're going to fail again at certain points of time and that's the way it goes. It's just going to go like that. So that gives a little tricky wicket, you know, as you're dealing with it. But it's, it's, you're still been going to be dealing with the Neptunian illusion and delusion and perfectionism and wanting a certain way. It's just it's slanted from Sagittarius, slanted from Aries, or slanted from Pisces. Okay? Oops. Alright. So. So, what we've got now is we've got a karma of four. And the karma of four is related to the karma of neutral mind. So, what this person wants is, what, what this person is working on is communication, harmony, balance, win-win, cooperation, fairness, justice, equanimity, um, peacefulness. Um, they want to create win-win and cooperation. Now they are karmically working on that. That doesn't mean that they're good at it. 
Um, that means that they're trying to figure that out. And so what you'll find is some people work really hard at this and they're brilliant at it, and then some people are not so good at it, and then you've got some people that are good at it in one area and not in another. So a classic example would be you've got a guy that's brilliant at negotiation and work, but he's terrible in his own relationship with his children. Okay, So he's got the skill in one area, but he doesn't have it in another area. Obviously, the, the trick is the reflection of the attachment, the emotional attachment. One is your kids, and one is work, and there's a little less attachment when it's work. And so um, anyway, so what we've got here is the karma of balance and harmony and win-win and cooperation. Now you've got a person who's born in, uh, as, an, as an Aries, so, which is cardinal fire sign. So here's cardinal fire. They're like striking a match. Um, is striking of a match neutral? No, not remotely neutral. So it's, you know, there's a huge amount of energy going. So you can imagine for in any Aries, they are incredibly challenged to stay neutral because they want to go now. They want it right now. Let's have make it happen now, right? So um, uh, the the classic example. Um, is, you know, you've got these, I mean, Aries, again, are great businessmen. They are really great at um, starting businesses, starting projects, um, making something happen and getting it done. And sometimes that's where they thrive in negotiation, is that they can negotiate those skills really beautifully there. But they oftentimes don't feel um, that they're at peace within themselves. So their identity can be really tied to their work. So you see a lot of Aries millionaires um, but you don't see a lot of Aries really, Aries really successful in relationships as much because um, being successful at money is a little non-personal and being successful in relationships is much, much harder. So Aries have a hard time in relationships because they're working on communication, but they don't always do it right. Okay, so they're working on it. They're trying, but they just don't always have this thing figured out. So, um, so when somebody is born at the end of the month of Aries, that becomes a, a Taurus. And, but now we've got an Earth energy mixed with, um, we've got the determination and the groundedness and the responsibility of Taurus mixed with this cardinal fire energy of Aries. Give, it's again a force to be reckoned with. I mean, so there's a lot of power there. I mean, so you've got the stability of the Earth and you've got the fire running on the earth. So think of it as a, a fire that's got a lot of fuel to burn on the ground. There's a lot of fuel and that fire can go like that. It's, it's a long way to go. So you find Tauruses born in the fourth month tend to be less stubborn and less rigid. Okay, so it's like because they've got that fire that's moving. You know, that fire is constantly, constantly moving. So. Um, so this is good. It's a good thing. So the karma for is about balance and harmony and win-win and cooperation, but it's they're working on it. They're working on it. So then, if we go to a five, 